I call the open session meeting to order this time and ask each and every one to rise um, for the land acknowledgement and our national anthem. The land upon which we work, live, and sustain ourselves is the ancestral and treaty lands of the Michizagig and Nishinaabe, also known today as the Mississaugas of the Credit, the rightful caretakers and title holders of this land. We also recognize the rich pre-contact history and relationships, which include the Anishinaabek and the Ongwe Hongwe. Since European contact, this land continues to be home to indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. As responsible community members, we value the diversity, dignity, and worth of all people. Colonialism displaced and dispossessed indigenous peoples of their ancestral land. And continues to deny their basic human rights, dignities, and freedoms. We are committed to learning true history, to reconcile, make reparations, and fulfill our treaty obligations to the original people and our collective responsibilities to the land, water, animals, and each other for future generations. time we're going to move to our next item which is item four approval of the agenda as the board remains on the supervision board action is still being approved by the supervisor supervisor Rodriguez already approved the agenda does anyone have any conflict of interest I'm not seeing any so we'll move to item six next item on the agenda is a selection and the announcements of committee membership. I will just turn this portion over to uh, Supervisor Rodriguez. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair Green. And through you, Chair Green, each year the term of office, there is an organizational meeting wherein the chair and vice chair of the board are elected and membership for committees is established. As per the ministry directives and the procedure bylaws, the committee should be balanced based on a variety of factors, including race, gender, ethnicity, experience, workload, expectations of the committee, and trustees' expressions of interest in particular committees. Given supervision, I've appointed the committee membership for the upcoming year, taking the balancing factors into consideration. The following committees will choose the chair and vice chair of the committees at the first meeting of the respective committee following the organizational meeting. Governance and Policy Committee, Physical Planning, Finance and Building Committee, Audit Committee, Curriculum Equity and Student Learning Committee, Budget Development Committee, and Negotiations Advisory Committee. Many of the third party committees, such as the Brampton Traffic School Safety Council, where a trustee sits on the committee, they will follow their own terms of reference or rules to appoint chairs and vice chairs as applicable. Given that the Discipline Committee's first meeting is fast approaching and is a meeting always held in closed session, I will be appointing the chair to that committee. The student trustees are eligible to attend any of the standing or statutory committees except the Discipline Committee, but their attendance does not count towards quorum and they are not entitled to vote at the committee. The following are the committees that have been established. The Budget Development Committee, 
composed of five trustees, and the term is for one year. The membership of that committee are trustees Davies, Joe Hall, B. McDonald, K. McDonald, and Trustee Promoli. The Negotiations Advisory Committee consists of six trustees, and the board chair and vice chair are ex officio to this committee. Their term is one year, and the trustee membership will be Trustee Alves, Bailey, Benjamin, Davies, Joe Hal, and Trustee B. McDonald. Chair Green and Vice Chair Cole will be ex officio. The Governance and Policy Committee has six trustees, and the board chair and vice chair are ex officio of this committee as well. Their term is for two years, and the membership will be trustees Alves, Bailey, Benjamin, Clark, B. McDonald, K. McDonald, and Chair Green and Vice Chair Cole will be ex officio. The Physical Planning, Finance, and Building Committee consists of six trustees and the board chair and vice chair ex officio. Their term is two years, and the membership will be trustees Bailey, Cameron, Davies, Joe Hal, B. McDonald, and Trustee Promoli. Chair Green and Vice Chair Cole will be ex officio. The Curriculum, Equity, and Student Wellbeing Committee consists of six trustees, with the board chair and vice chair being ex officio. It's a two-year term, and the membership will include trustees Alves, Benjamin, Cameron, Clark, K. McDonald, and Trustee Promoli, with Chair Green and Vice Chair Cole being ex officio. The Audit Committee has three trustees. It's a one-year term, and the membership will be trustees Alves, Cameron, and Davies. The Discipline Committee has three trustees and two alternates. It's a one-year term, and the membership will be trustees Clark, Cole, and K. McDonald, and the alternates will be trustees Alves and Benjamin, and the chair of that committee will be trustee K. McDonald. The Parent Involvement Committee has one trustee and one alternate. It's a one-year term, and trustee Joe Hal, with the alternate being trustee Benjamin. The Special Education Advisory Committee has three trustees in its, uh, as in its composition. It's a one-year term, and the membership will be trustees Benjamin, Clark, and Joe Hal. Supervised alter uh, alternate learning, one trustee in its, uh, in its composition. It's a one-year term, and trustee K. McDonald. The Accessibility Advisory has one trustee and one alternate. It's a four-year term. Trustee Clark will be its member, and Trustee Alves will be its alternate. The Brampton School Traffic Safety Council has one trustee and one alternate. It's a four-year term. Trustee Davies is the member, and Trustee K. McDonald will be the alternate. The Mississauga Traffic Safety Council has one trustee and one alternate. It's a four-year term. Trustee Promoli will be the member, and Trustee Cole will be the alternate. The OPSMA Board of Directors has two trustees and two alternates, has a one-year term that ends in June, and currently Trustee Green and Trustee K. McDonald serve, and Trustee Benjamin is the alternate. The OPSMA Regional Council has one trustee and one alternate. It has a one-year term that comes uh, due on June at the June AGM, and that will be done in June. The Peel Safe and Active Routes to School, its, uh, its composition is of one trustee, it's a one-year term, and Trustee K. McDonald will be its member. The Student Transportation of Peel Region has one trustee, it's a four-year term, and Trustee Chair Green will be its member. The TRCA Natural Science and Education Committee has one trustee, it's a four-year term, and Trustee Cameron will serve as its, as its member. And the Volunteer MBC Center has one trustee, it's a two-year term, and Trustee ben Benjamin will be its member. I would, like, I would also like trustees to note that the first meeting of all committees is mandatory in person, except for discipline. The Special Education Advisory Council 
and the Parent Involvement Committee. This is so that the chair and vice chair elections can take place. Thereafter, committee meetings will be offered as hybrid with attendance either in person or virtual, as per Ontario Regulation 463-97. Chairs of the committee must be physically present in the meeting room, as does the Director of Education or her designate. That concludes my remarks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee. Um, Supervisor Rodriguez. Um, at this time, I'm going to move to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, a trust report of trustee appointed external organization. And this afternoon, there is no report. Next item on the agenda is item eight. And uh, 8.1 is Christian Heritage Month. The recognition of Christian Heritage Month in December was declared by the city of Brampton in 2019 and was officially adopted by the Peel Lucia School Board in 2020. According to the 2021 Canadian Census, 53 0.3% of the population identify as Christian in Peel. The 2018 student census indicate that 19.2% of the Peel students identify as Christian. Christian Heritage Months offer the opportunity for Peel District School Board students, their families, staff, to celebrate and educate future generations about the achievements and the contribution of Christian within and beyond Canada. Our publicly stated commitment to anti-racism and anti-oppression ensure that this occur throughout engaging, equipping, and inclusive online and in-person learning, modified and true culturally relevant program opportunity. In celebration of Christian Heritage Month, we continue to center student lives, experience, as well as amplify the community identification of Christian flourish. This afternoon we thank you as we continue to celebrate with um, all those that are Christian in the month of December. We'll move to item nine, just staff recognition, and we are gonna move down to retirements. At this time, I'm gonna turn over to uh, Vice Chair Cole to read the names of the retirees for this month. Thank you. Here are the retirements for the 2022 year. We have Heath Allen, Carol Arts, Ar Ar sorry, I can't pronounce it, Arsevsky, Alan Baldwin, Julie Bauer, Troy Cardingly, Cordingly, Michelle DeSantis, Steve Hanna, Jane Leck, Brenda Lepolt, Draga Mercobred, <coughs> Josefina Policarapio, Sam Rigaud, Idiana Rodriguez, Gary Shepard, Rebecca Stevens, George Thomas, Gaynor Ward, Pam Wex, and George Wilson. And just want to say we thank you for your years of service. Thank you, Vice Chair Cole. We'll move to the next item on our agenda which is uh, the chair announcement this afternoon. There's no chair announcements. We'll move to item 11, which is a student trustee um, report. And there are no report this afternoon from our student trustees. And next, we're gonna move to item 12, leadership report, which is oral. And I'm gonna turn it over to Director Suru at this time. Thank you, Chair Green. Good evening, trustees, staff, and community members. Last week, we hosted the Network of Black Studies Educators Showcase at Peel District School Board, 
an event that brought together educators, staff, and students to learn more about the opportunities to further black studies in Peel <coughs> secondary schools. The network of black studies educators allows us to deliver on our mission of inspiring success, confidence, and hope in each student by addressing the disparities and disproportionalities facing black and indigenous students, and by working towards the highest levels of achievement and excellence. This group of educators has provided students with meaningful and authentic learning rooted in their diverse cultural identities. Thanks to their collective efforts, all secondary schools and Peel District School Board will be offering Black Studies courses benefiting all students. Their work in helping to eradicate anti-black racism in education and to transform learning at Peel District School Board is proof of the strength and sustainability of grassroots solutions. The Central Board Office was transformed with the enthusiasm, energy, and joy of students and staff. I'd like to share a news clip from CBC News Toronto that captured the energy, pride, and knowledge sharing that took place that day. The Peel District School Board is finding new ways to include the black experience in their curriculum. This after a report came out two years ago that found they lacked programming for black and racialized students. Ali Shiasak has more. Change begins in the classroom because that's where most students spend their time. So in order for us to empower black students to give them the opportunities, the resources, the things that they need to be proudly black, um, it's ch you have to start in the classroom. She said it. We are at the Peel District School Board HQ in Mississauga where educators laid out the strides they're taking to incorporate the black experience and black excellence into the school curriculum beyond only black history, but also English, uh, literature, science, math, music. Two years ago, the Ministry of Education reviewed Peel's curriculum and found the school board didn't offer any courses that were culturally relevant to black and racialized students in the school community. Now they've created the network of black studies educators dedicated to making the necessary changes. In our curriculum, in our learning materials, in our teaching approaches, in our learning environment, so that they can achieve at their potential, particularly the contributions of black Canadians and black students, so they can see themselves reflected. It was most definitely overdue because People talk about black history as if it was just history, but it's also great to know what path or direction that we're going forward. I love learning that how the curriculum can be changed and how we won't just be focusing on slavery and how we can learn more about how, you know, black people weren't just slaves, how we were kings, pharaohs, queens, you know, how we had a hand in the pyramids, how, you know, we are like everywhere in the world and how we truly impacted Canada today. I'm really glad to see Peel working hard to bring that stuff that are long overdue here and I hope that they will continue this progress that they're on. There's a joy here, excitement for the future because these students are the future. And after a much needed literal change of course, it's looking a little brighter. Ali Shiasan, CBC News, Mississauga. Yes, this place was so vibrant and enthusiastic that day as you saw in the video. Next. Peel District School Board is excited to welcome Penny Appeal Canada and the PS43 Foundation, Canada's Coding for Champions, which will be launching a program with the students from Mayfield, Lincoln Alexander, and TL Kennedy Secondary Schools. The program teaches students to code at their own pace. Toronto Raptors Power Forward Pascal Siakam has collaborated with Penny Appeal to offer opportunities for Peel District School Board students who are either racialized or new to Canada. The program will run for six weeks starting in January 2023 in partnership with Canada Learning Code. Students will learn the basics of designing their own websites by coding with HTML and CSS programming languages. Penny Appeal Canada and Pascal Siakam are hoping the program will excite students into a future career pathway. Coding for Champions will provide support for students in the program to differentiate the curriculum for students new to coding or for those at a more advanced level. The program will be launched at an event to be attended by Pascal Siakam on December 6th. 
we look forward to providing this exciting opportunity for our students. This year, Peel District School Board observed Bullying Prevention and Intervention Week between November 14th and November 18th, 2022. Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week is a province-wide initiative to help promote safe and accepting schools. In Peel District School Board, we asked our community to hashtag choose action to be anti-racist during this week and every day. This year in Peel, students engaged in activities that strengthened their understanding of knowing what racism, discrimination, and oppression look like as grounded in the Ontario Human Rights Code. Staffed helps students develop an awareness of how to co-create learning environments that affirm the identities of students and engaged in learning about how to be critically conscious, anti-racist, and restorative. And in continuing our work with the ministry directives and beyond, staff today will share our work to address anti-Islamophobia in a way that is deliberate and meaningful and that protects our students and staff from experiencing harm because of prejudice, bias, and racism. This work will ensure that incidents involving Islamophobia are identified and addressed and appropriately in a manner that all in all learning and working spaces. Following the opening of the Center for Indigenous Excellence and Land-Based Learning earlier this month, a report is being brought forward today that recommends the official naming of the center that is a step towards reconciliation grounded in Indigenous education, sovereignty, and partnership with, in with Indigenous communities, students, and families. And finally, I'm happy to announce that our United Way Employee Giving Campaign launches today and runs on until December 16th. Throughout these two weeks, employees can make a donation in support of United Way Greater Toronto, making a difference in the lives of Peel families. Last week we raised, last year we raised $42,000, helping to strengthen our community ties and lift our neighbors in need. Thank you all for your participation and generosity. And that concludes my remarks for the evening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Saru. That great stuff are happening, and we look forward to continue seeing more great things that are happening. Uh, watching that video with those kids were very, very inspiring to talk about the work and the journey ahead. Thank you. Okay, we will move down to item 13. And there are no consent to gender item. We're just going to move on to item 14. Supervisor Rodriguez has approved the minutes of the board meeting held October 19 and the minutes of the inauguration meeting of the board held on November 16th. Item 15. Supervisor Rodriguez has received the minutes of the parent involvement committee meeting held on the September 15, the minutes of special ed advisory committee meeting held on September 20th, the minutes of the audit committee meeting held on September 30th, the minutes of the curriculum and equity student well-being committee meeting held on October 13, and the minutes of the special ed advisory council meeting held on October 20th. Supervisor Rodriguez also received the minutes of the physical and planning and financial building committee meeting of November 2nd. Further approved the motion coming from the annual planning document for 2022-2023 as contained in the agenda and taken as read. Supervisor Rodriguez received the minutes of the audit committee meeting held on November 14th. There were two recommendations brought forward from the board, and Supervisor Rodriguez has approved them both. The recommendations are that the consolidation financial statement for the Peel District School Board for the year end August 31st, 2022, be approved, and that the audit committee report for 2021-2022 be received and be submitted by the board to the Ministry of Education. Thank you. Now we will move to item 16. 
staff report. Item 16, there are two report relating to Ministry Directive 14, the four-year equity strategy plan. The first report, item 16.1, anti-Islamophobia strategy development update. And Director Suru. Thank you, Chair Green, and through you, I will now ask Principal Omar Zia to present the Anti-Islamophobia Strategy Development Update Number 2. Thank you, Director Soroop, and through you, Chair Green. The purpose of this report is to provide the first update on the progress on the development of the Anti-Islamophobia Strategy. The Anti-Islamophobia Strategy is a community-led and PDSB staff-facilitated initiative. It is integral to Directive 14 and supports compliance to the requirements of the ministry directives. The working group is comprised of PDSB staff who identify as Muslim, members of the equity department, and community members, specifically the National Council of Canadian Muslims. This update builds on the consultation process of both internal and external stakeholders outlined in the November 2021 progress report. In that report, the results of the internal consultations were represented through the equity accountability report card exploring the equity gap by faith slash spirituality, part one, completed in June 2021. These consultations address the experiences of PDSB students in five secondary schools. From March to May 2022, consultations via focus groups and key information interviews that included PDSB staff and parents were held. The working group were interested in hearing from parents a voice that was absent from their data. The consultation report was presented in May of 2022. Prelim pre preliminary thematic analysis of the PDSB parent, students, and staff perspectives make up the findings listed in the, in the report in the following manner. Number one, normalization of Islamophobia. Number two, system-wide gaps in meaningful representation and affirmation of intersectional Muslim identities. And number three, gaps in knowledge, translation, and action Islamophobia needs to be taken seriously by the system. In July and August of 2022, the summer writing team was created with members of the working group drafting the strategy based on the findings of, the, of these reports. And from that, they created the following draft contents or sections. Number one, historical context of Islamophobia. Number two, its manifestation in PDSB learning and workplace environments. Number three, guiding principles and number four, focus areas. The intent is that naming, interruption, and dismantling of Islamophobia is a shared and ongoing exercise among all members of, P of the PDSB community, including trustees and senior leadership. Co-developed community-based strategies foster collaboration among our stakeholders and are an opportunity for coherence building within the PDSB organization. The consultants who authored the Black Student Strategy, We Rise Together 2.0, and the strategy to affirm Muslim student identities and dismantle Islamophobia connected during the drafting of the strategy to share promising practices. We heard from the black community last spring that when race is centered, when anti-black racism is addressed, so too are other systemic racisms, even as they manifest because of the intersectionality of identities. It is important to note that this strategy to affirm Muslim identities and dismantle Islamophobia would not and could not exist except through the efforts of the black community and the PDSB in supporting strategies to disrupt and dismantle anti-black racism. The intent of the joint work was to reinforce the unity of purpose, to ensure PDSB dismantles systemic anti-black racism as well as other systemic oppressions, in this particular instance, Islamophobia. In the fall of 2022, the writing team reconvened to review their summer work with input from several departments, including legal and governance, the Human Rights Office, and Human Resources. On the one page summary, you will find the guiding principles. Number one, experiences and occurrence of Islamophobia are systemic and common. Number two, public education is not neutral. Number three, understanding social location and the development of meaningful allyship is necessary. Number four, Action to dismantle Islamophobia must be prioritized and be ongoing. Number five, accountability measures must be enacted at all levels. You also find on the one page summary, the six pillars that will guide the work as we roll out the strategy to our system. Number one, 
build capacity to lead implementation of the strategy. Number two, affirm and celebrate Muslim identities. Number three, create learning and working environments that intentionally disrupt Islamophobia. Number four, foster meaningful engagement with Muslim communities. Number five, support the mental health and well-being of Muslim students and staff. And number six, implement responsive hiring and supportive practices. We are working to have the final report presented to the board in early 2023. And that is my report. Thank you, Chair Green. And I can take any questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you for that report. At this time, I'll turn to trustee to ask if there's any question. Um, this time, in regards to the report. I'm seeing none. Thank you very much for the report. Director Saru, thank you very much. Do you have anything um, to add, Director Saru? Not at this time, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, at this time we're gonna move to the next item, which is 161B. Naming of the Indian News Center for Excellent and Land Based Learning Policy Sorry. 27. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 I did not see that. Uh, sorry about that, Trustee McDonald. Uh, Trustee Kathy McDonald is online and she has a question. Go ahead, Trustee McDonald. Thank you, Chair Green. First, I just want to thank Director Saru and the entire team for this amazing, exceptional report. I sit here with great excitement as I witnessed two amazing um, reports. First, the oral report that you gave Director Saru as we opened our Indigenous Center, as well as the, um, this report that's here before us this evening. Um, as a result of, and all of this work came out as a result of the ministry review. So I'm really excited about this. And I also wanted to um, acknowledge um, the work of our, my former colleague, uh, Trustee Noka de Krub, in all the work that she did um, in bringing this forward to the board. And my question is, the, the report when it comes out in January, is that going to be um, the end of that the strategy will be totally completed. Director Suru. Thank you, Trustee McDonald, for your question. When it comes out in January, it is a final report, but we always believe in ongoing review and assessment as it rolls out into practice throughout the system. Okay, thank you for that. So when it, so in January, after this report comes forward um, to the board, and I anticipate it will be approved, will does that now set in motion, for example, um, training of staff, and, and it will officially be rolled out to the system? Yes, there will be an action plan that will be devised following the report's approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, Thank you for those questions, uh, Trustee McNamara. <coughs> and uh, Supervisor Rodriguez is in receipt of this report. Thank you. We'll move to the next item. And uh, that's uh, naming of the Indigenous Center for Excellent and Land-Based Learning Policy 27. Naming of the facility. Director Sue. Through you, Chair Green, I will now ask uh, Coordinating Leader of Indigenous Education, Nicole Reynolds, to present the report on naming of the Indigenous Center for Excellence in Land-Based Learning, Policy 27. Thank you, Director Swaroop, and through you, Chair Green. On November 22nd, we welcomed Indigenous students, families, and community members, alongside various representatives from the Peel District School Board to launch the Center for Indigenous Education and Land-Based Learning. It was an evening of braiding education, culture, and community, strengthening our relationships in a sovereign Indigenous space. The purpose of this report is to name this center. During the summer of 2022, an Indigenous student camp took place at GW Finlayson Field Center in which Indigenous students from around the board gathered to take part in various cultural activities. 
In keeping with the action of centering student voice, the participants of the camp were tasked with naming. Working alongside community partner Leslie McHugh, the students identified Sweetgrass as an important symbol for the camp. They looked at the camp as a gathering of Sweetgrass because gathering together and braiding our learning with community and culture was the essence of the camp. The name, a gathering of Sweetgrass, was translated into Anishinaabe Moen and became the name of the camp, Manjading Wingush King. This name held enough meaning to describe the vision and direction of the camp. Later on, at a fall gathering held at Jack Smythe Field Center, the students who attended that very camp voiced their opinion that this should be the name of the more permanent place, the Center for Indigenous Education and Land-Based Learning, a place in which students could gather and take part in greater learning. The meaning of Manjading Wingush King considers several important factors within Indigenous culture, ways of knowing, and pedagogy. The name itself describes a gathering of sweetgrass. Each blade in a sweetgrass braid represents an important part of First Nation culture. The sweetgrass braid represents body, mind, spirit, past, present, and future. It relates to the seven fire prophecies that talk about children and how they would return to reclaim their land, culture, and identity, which they lost through colonization. The sweetgrass braid is a representation of this. A single strand of sweetgrass may be easily broken. However, when you braid them together, it becomes virtually unbreakable. This is a metaphor for the strength of community Reclamation of culture and identity through relationships with community is what this center hopes to achieve. The name Manjading Wingush King was brought to a community consultation meeting on October 22nd. Due to the special circumstances of the Center of Indigenous Excellence and Land-Based Learning and ensuring Indigenous voices were centered, the naming committee consisted of First Nation, Métis, and Inuit representatives, along with invited members of the board and the trustee who serves the area. The meeting of the consultation committee occurred virtually on Microsoft Teams. In addition to the invited members, Leslie McHugh and Lindy Kunoshemig, who worked with the students to develop the name, joined to give further context. After the consultation and question period, there were no objections to the name Manjading Wingush King. Communication and consultation with members of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation occurred between October 24th and November 1st. There were no objections to the name Manjading Wingush King, and treaty partners Gary Sue and Veronica King Jameson joined us at the launch of the center. The name Manjading Wingush King demonstrates the reclamation of identity and culture. When sweet grass is braided together, it becomes stronger. So the work of the Center of Indigenous Excellence and Land-Based Learning is the braiding of the land, education, and the community. First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students will be stronger with the opportunities that they will access at this center, just like the sweet grass. And I'll take any questions. Thank you. Is there any question from trustees this evening? Thank you for that report. Um, I want to just say that um, I was able to attend myself and uh, trustee Cameron and several other trustees. And it was an amazing evening uh, for me. And uh, just even to see and listen to uh, the uh, evening and the presentation itself, I've learned so much and uh, more and more I'm learning more about truth and reconciliation. And uh, it, it, it was very exciting for me that um, this weekend at the Ontario School Board Association, when I did my report at the executive letter um, level, um, it was really exciting and people came up to me and uh, was congratulating us and moving in the right direction um, in a, a step towards truth and reconciliation. So thank you for this report. Um, Supervisor Rodriguez has approved the naming 
of the Indigenous uh, Center for Excellent and Land-Based Learning, formerly the Credit View Public School, the Mananjing Singh Dash King. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, we will move to uh, um, item uh, 16.2 um, in the report, um, Working Fund Reserve Transfer, Director Suru. Through you, Chair Green, I will now ask Associate Director Jess Gill to present the report on Working Fund Reserves Transfers. Thank you, uh, Director Suru, and through you, uh, Chair Green. Earlier tonight, the board approved the consolidated financial statements for the 2021-22 year as part of the audit committee recommendations. As part of the year-end process, there are two recommendations in this report. The first recommendation is the transfer of funds to a dedicated working fund reserve, normally referred to as appropriated accumulated surplus. There are two specific transfers as part of this recommendation. First transfer is regarding school budgets. Each elementary school is allowed to roll over up to $8,000 and each secondary school up to $16,000 of their unspent funds from one year to the next year. These rollovers allows the school some flexibility in developing plans for the use of their funds as well as it allows them to meet commitments from one year to the other. Second transfer is regarding operational funds. This transfer allows the implementation of specific central department projects and programs that were budgeted during the, during the 2021 year, but not completed until the following year. The second recommendation in this report is regarding the dedicated working fund reserves identified in recommendation one. It allows the use of these funds to offset the applicable operational cost in the current year or in future years. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Associate Director Gill, any question? Associate Director Gill or Director Suru? I am seeing none. Uh, Supervisor Rodriguez has approved the recommendation containing this report that the transfer to be um, dedicated working fund reserve appropriate accumulation surplus as August 31st, 2022 be approved as followed. At school and school support consumption fund in the amount of 2,312,409. A miscellaneous operation fund in the amount of one million two hundred and seventy-two four hundred and eighty-six, and that the dedicated working fund reserve appropriate cumulative surplus identify in the recommendation one to be transferred and used to offset the applicable operation costs in 2022-2023 or future years. Thank you. The next item um, is 16.2, the schedule of the financial report, Director Sru. Through you, Chair Green, I would ask Associate Director Jasper Gill to present the schedule of financial reports. So thank you, uh, Director Sru, and through you, uh, Chair Green. As per our past practice, uh, financial reports will be presented to the board on a quarterly basis as of as indicated in the, in the report, uh, November 30th, uh, February 28th, 2023, May 31st, 2023, and August 31st, uh, 2023. Again, happy to, to answer any questions. Okay. Any question from trustees? I'm not seeing none. Is not seeing any hands in line. Either. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Supervisor um, Rodriguez is in receipt of this report. Thank you. And now, and we'll move to item uh, 16.4, and is a special ed advisory committee member, Director Sewell. Through 
Through you, Chair Green, I will ask Associate Director Paul De Silva to share the report on the appointment of Special Education Advisory Committee members. Thank you, Director Swarou. And through you, Chair Green, before you, this evening is a report that identifies the community associations and the representatives and alternates who will be part of the Special Education Advisory Committee, SEAC, for the upcoming term. Appointments to SEAC are made by the board according to regulation 464-97. And so we are seeking the board's approval for these recommendations. There are 11 community associations identified in the report, all of whom have been part of SEAC in the past term. They are strong advocates for the students and families who are supported by their associations, and indeed for all students in the board who receive special education supports and services. These associations are valued for this deep commitment and advocacy and for the accountability they seek from the board in our delivery of services to students and families. Through this report, we thank these associations and representatives for their past work, and we are seeking the board's approval in appointing them for the upcoming term. There are 12 available seats for community associations on SEAC, so in submitting this report, we recognize that one appointment remains unfilled. Staff will be engaging in an open public call out to fill this vacancy through our website and appropriate media channels, and we will bring a nomination forward to the board for approval at a future meeting. In addition to these association representatives, three board trustees are members of SEAC, and we recognize and thank those trustees whose committee membership appointments to SEAC were announced earlier in the, in, this, in the meeting this evening. Thank you, Chair Green, and I would be pleased to respond to any questions. Thank you. Is there any question? For Associate Director Silver, Director Sroon? Seen now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Rodriguez has approved the following that the following representation of the Association for Children with Special Need be appointed to the Special Ed Advisory Committee for the year 2022 26 terms of office. First, Barbara Sear, Associate for Bright Children. Fitz Raza, Autism Ontario Appeal Chapter, Anne Smith, Brampton, Caledon, Levin, Schmicker, um, Pash Nakam, Canadian Mental Health Association, Mary Wright, uh, Down Syndrome Association of Peel, Jennifer Knight, Easter Seal, Dorothy Petty, uh, Fast Word Canada, Peel Chapter, Nicole Bucket, uh, Fragile X. Uh, Carol O'Leary, Learning Disability Association Appeal. Jesse Gill, Ontario Parents for Visual Impaired. Shelley Foster, for Voice for Hearing Impaired Children. And further, that the following representative of the Association for Children with Special Need be appointed as alternate to the Special Ed Advisory Council 2022 to 2026 terms of office. Karen Kennedy, Alternative for Associates of Bright Children. Uh, Aruj Misty, Alternative for Down Syndrome. Uh, Sadi Sobi, Alternative for Eastern, Easter Seal. And Wes McDonald, Alternative for Anterior Parent for Visually Impaired. Thank you. We'll move to item 17. Uh, this afternoon, there is no uh, uh, trustee motion for consideration. Item 18, there are no trustee notice of motion. And we'll move to item 19. Uh, Supervisor Rodriguez approved the report of the Committee of the Whole Closed Session. Read minutes of the Audit Committee of September 30th, minutes of the Committee of a Whole Closed Session, October 19th, minutes of the Physical Planning, Financial and Building Committee meeting, November 2nd, including that the recommendation contained therein be approved, and that the minutes of the Audit Committee meeting, November 14th, including that the recommendation contained therein to be approved. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, there is no other item on the agenda. So uh, we, at this time, stand adjourned. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Have a great evening.